How many screenplays have you been working on over the last five years? A lot more than I've, that have been made into movies, that's for sure. Um, I would say I've developed or worked with someone on developing it on five or six, probably more. Maybe up, up to ten, I would say. One we've developed for a long time for a studio, um, which then took one afternoon for the new boss that is a classic story. You develop something with one executive at the helm who loves the project and then they get fired unrelated to the project. The next generation comes in and goes, oh, we don't, we don't want that kind of movie. And it doesn't, it's not about the quality of the script. It's about they don't want to make that movie right now. And then you're pro so there is, that's, I think, maybe the, the hidden thing that you never see about directing that the majority of work you do on stuff that never makes it to the screen and that you never get paid for. And that's just an investment that you have to make and that hopefully works out because some of the stuff does get made. Which again, that's where the jumping on greenlit projects comes from because there you have less of that fallout where you've just worked needlessly into the void and then nothing ever comes of it. Um, but I would say some of the best scripts that I've ever worked on are the ones that have not been made. You know? And that's what the whole the blacklist is based on, right? It's just a list of the greatest scripts that have never been made. Um, so someone had to sit on those and develop those and they probably weren't paid for it. So I'm doing a lot of that work that you always have to push away in the back of your head that you might be doing this in vain right now because it's so much work and so much. You have to put in the same amount of emotion and, and put importance on it as if as you do on the ones that are then getting made because you don't know which are the ones that are getting made and which ones are the ones that are not getting made. So it can be heartbreaking, um, but that's part of the job, I think. How many different screenwriters are you working with? I, I have one, um, David Burke, who is a genius screenwriter that I've done a couple of scripts with and he rewrote Last Exorcism, he wrote, wrote 13 Sins. Um, he's amazing, so I'll work with him whenever I can, but a lot of times the scripts come with other writers attached and then if producers um, are championing the, the scripts, I will work with that writer who wrote the initial draft. So I would say these 10 scripts over the last couple of years maybe had five different writers on them, or six different writers. What's the most challenging part of finishing a screenplay for you? Probably finishing that screenplay, because there are still so many, in my case, there are still so many things that need fixing. Um, but if, if we waited for me to fix all the things that I think need fixing, it would never see the light of day. So it's always been the case, which I guess is a good problem to have, that producers are going, this is great, this is ready, let's do it, or let's not do it, or whatever the next step is, let's finish developing it. And I have to get myself to the point where I'm like, okay, I'll, I'm willing to let go. If it were the other way around, it'd be trickier, I guess. If I'm like, this is good enough, and the producers are, no, it's not. I don't want to be in those shoes either, but my experience is more the opposite, that, that other people are ready to make something much quicker than I am. So that's kind of a difficult situation to be in. Is it the ending of the screenplay or is it the character arc? It, uh, what, um... it's, it's, it's throughout because there are, in a script there are obviously moments that work better and moments that work less well, but oftentimes you kind of leave the moment that's a little bit wonky in there just to be, just to not lose momentum and you carry on. Because I think the writing process is less like people imagine it, where it's like you write the first act and then you write the second act and by the time that you have reached the third act you're done with the script, but you rewrite everything all the time and the first act is maybe the most worked on because you already rewrite it as you're writing the other ones, you know. Um, so I don't, it's, it's not necessarily at the end or whatever, but it's all these wonky moments where during the writing process, during the draft, you go like, yeah, we'll get to that later. We'll do, it'll, it'll work for now, blah, blah, blah. And then if you're co-writing with someone, which is what I'm doing, that is where you then have slight differences of opinion somehow. What we get away with, what we don't get away with, what is believable, what's not believable. In the beginning, there's always a lot of agreement because we kind of see the broad brush strokes exactly the same. But w the later it gets, the more we're discussing details all of a sudden, where our views might be different. 
You know, and that's why I like working with David so much because once you have worked with someone, you know what that process looks like. Where with other, where other writers are, might be at each other's throats because you know suddenly every detail matters so much. So it's definitely in the later stages where exhaustion kicks in. Also, nothing for you feels fresh anymore. The jokes you've heard a million times, none of it seems funny. The scares aren't scary. Um, it's just, it's, it, there's a certain dullness that sets in that if someone reads it fresh, and that's why it's so important to then give it to someone, because the other thing that they bring in, other than having notes on it, is an enthusiasm, hopefully, that you can feed off of, that you've long lost for you, it's just work, and it's oh, another draft, blah, blah, blah. And then you have someone read it for the first time and go, like, this was hilarious and it was scary, but you go, like, oh, I forgot, you know, and that gives you another couple of weeks of fuel to kind of carry on, it's a whole back and forth. What advice do you have for someone who's having trouble finishing a screenplay? I have no advice. Because that goes back to thinking that that's the, the hardest part of the whole thing. And that's part of why I don't write, because I would not have an answer to it. Because, I don't know, it's so ethereal, the whole thing, you know? Either something presents itself or it doesn't. Maybe show it to other people. I guess, show it to other people, open it up, don't be precious about it, um, and just try to survive the feedback. Somehow. I'm always putting a little paper on my wall before I show anything to anyone and go like, this is feedback, it's supposed to be depressing, so that I can afterwards read it and go like, oh, I knew this before, because I forget it. When I get the feedback, I'm always thinking I'm so depressed because it surprised me and I thought the project was great and I get bad feedback. But then I look at the paper and I'm like, oh no, that's the process. I knew that before, that feedback. You, you do feedback to get negative feedback. Otherwise it would not be valuable, right? You want stuff that didn't work for people. But of course, when that hits you like a wave, so you have to be prepared for that. But I think other than that, probably showing it to other people is the only way to go.